This was absolutely a performance beast, right? It, it was faster than OpenGL, it was faster than DirectX. Having access to GPU inside a browser would obviously have a lot of applications for ML and AI things as well, especially in the world where privacy matters a lot. So people are not willing to upload their data, for example. Web GPU is coming. In this video, I want to go back into history a bit to understand about what exactly led to WebGPU, what was WebGL, and why this is an important change in the age of browsers, right? So let's get into it. Let's discuss what WebGPU is. Also, if you're new here, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell icon if you want to keep on receiving notifications for the amazing content you're gonna see on CodeDamp on a daily basis. Let's go. This video is a part of CodeDamp's t-shirt giveaway program for the month if you want to take part and win an amazing code damn t-shirt all you have to do is leave a comment on this video about what you think and that's it you are eligible if your comment gets a heart from code damn you will win a t-shirt for absolutely free okay so in order to understand web gpu we actually have to go a step back to something known as web gl web gl was a technology created to bring something known as OpenGL to the web. Now, OpenGL is a set of APIs which you can use as a developer. Let's say this was in uh, WebGL was started in 2009 as a project. So back in 2009, OpenGL was a standard which you could use on Linux, for example, to interact with the GPU, right? So this set of APIs was not available to the web at that time. That means if you're using a web browser, your JavaScript code, your code running inside the browser could not use GPU for performing certain operations. Now the problem here was that OpenGL was not used by Windows, right? So Windows actually used DirectX or their own system for interacting with the GPU. So WebGL, although it started as a project to bring the OpenGL APIs to the web, had to do small detour when you were running a browser on Windows, right? So the APIs would be radically different, the mapping would be different and so on. Plus, I'm not sure how many of you have heard about DirectX, but I had heard a lot about it when I was small because in order to install any sort of game on your computer, you needed a software, something called as DirectX at that time. And at that time, you would just pretty much download it, install it, and the game would run. But DirectX was the piece of software which allowed your computer to communicate with your GPU for faster processing and faster rendering of graphics. The problem here was that WebGL, on Windows at least, did not and could not actually run DirectX commands directly, right? So what it needed to do is that on Windows, WebGL had to first of all, sit on something known as Angle in order to convert any sort of WebGL standard which the browser was following into the code which your GPU can understand running on Windows, right? So this was, this means that there was a performance hit at this point, right? So WebGL wasn't as fast as it could be theoretically if it was directly communicating with the GPU, right? So in order to fix this whole mess of things, there was a new standard developed called Vulkan. So this standard right here was designed in such a way that this was even lower level access in terms of API so it could access even more features and it could be used to build even more features and functionalities sitting on your GPU. Plus, this was absolutely a performance beast, right? It, it was faster than OpenGL, it was faster than DirectX, it is supposed to be faster than DirectX and so on. And this is of course cross-platform as well, right? So this is cross-platform. So once this was developed, once Vulkan was developed, obviously this is sitting on a computer, right? And web browsers are running inside of, I mean, your web page is running inside a virtual machine called a browser, right? So now this virtual machine, this browser, this V8 engine or whatever browser you use needs to have access to Vulkan in order to access the GPU, right? So that is where WebGPU comes in. So WebGPU is a new standard which sits on top of Vulkan. And this boy right here is a performance beast. Vulkan now communicates with your GPU at a much lower level, right? So you write some code for the web, your browser sends it to the Vulkan APIs, calls the Vulkan APIs, it communicates with the GPU, gets back the results, and this is extremely fast. This is super fast compared to what you are were doing with WebGL and OpenGL, even OpenGL in a lot of cases. So this is the crux. Now about the support for WebGPU, you would 
be happy to know that Chrome has actually shipped support for WebGPU already in Chrome 94, which was released this week. So technically you can try WebGPU by going into flags and turning on that experimental feature and this WebGPU would work, right? Obviously there are caveats here and all a lot of asterisks in terms of what APIs you can use and what platforms you can run. But yeah, Chrome is coming strong on WebGPU at least and this will enable a lot of interesting use cases like more smooth 3D games just running on the web browser itself. Instead of just streaming it from a server, now it would be possible to run it on a decently good GPU as well. I'm not a big ML AI person, so I don't know if this is applicable, but having access to GPU inside a browser would obviously have a lot of applications for ML and AI things as well, especially in the world where privacy matters a lot. So people are not willing to upload their data, for example. Like for example, iPhone does a lot of ML stuff right in your phone instead of uploading it to Apple. So maybe that is something like that is also possible on the web once we unlock more access to GPU and a faster access to GPU, maybe we'll see. So yeah, that's pretty much it for web GPU and that's that's all you basically need to understand in order to stay relevant with this. If you like this video, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon. That is all for this one. I'm going to see you in the next video really soon.